All right, I think we are ready to go. So, ladies and gentlemen, now welcome to this lovely webinar, I can say today. Uh, we have a special guest, and it's a series of webinars we launch here at Admirals Market Talk. And we start with a famous trader today, Anna Cooling, all the way from the UK. And we are really, really excited. How can we uh, implement volume trading? I can say that's here, brother, uh, brother, brother, Barton. Let's put it that way. Um, uh, she's an exceptional trader. And without saying too many uh, from now, let me just move on and put this in front. So, just to make sure that everyone understands that this content is for general information only and is not intended to provide trading or investment advice or personal recommendations. And of course, as I already say, today with us, Anna, it's a, among the uh, famous traders in the community, and she's trading and investing for so many years and i will say i believe more years than any one of us tonight okay more than two decades uh she has a a different approach in the markets and that's the beauty of her trading style and uh, that's i'm really really excited to go through the interview today and uh, find out for all of us how does she manage to get into the markets and how does she trade how does she invest she's going to show us a little bit more of your trading style absolutely but before i would like and i will please everyone ladies and gentlemen every trader in this webinar and for those of course they want to watch it later on the recording please don't hesitate go to the facebook and the twitter and please uh like and subscribe and follow Anna you're gonna only find value out of that I'm sharing the links on the chat box please click on the links uh now and just follow her pages all righty and as for today's agenda so we will start with the interview, of course, and that's why we are here and we are really excited to interview Anna. I will go through many questions and uh, I'm sure that everyone here is uh, going through in their own, own journey in trading as we all started, okay? And until we developed ourselves as traders, uh, someone says, Oscar, you can hear just to make sure uh everybody else can uh, listen and see the screen clearly guys if you kindly say uh just a quick yes on the chat box i will appreciate to make sure so oscar there are many people they commented yes so it looks like it's from your side so please uh check your computer all righty so and as I was saying, we are going through our own journey and we are going through struggles. We are going through stage of uh, uh, euphoria, stage of uh, trading, mental disaster, let's say, at some point. And that's why we uh, listen to people that they have the results we want to have and uh, we get the understanding of how they went through and where their um, uh, breakthrough moment came in trading. Then Anna will explain us by sharing her screen for a while, how she approaches trading with the volume analysis, of course. And at the end, we're going to leave some time for Q&A. So prepare some questions and uh, we will, Anna will be more than glad to answer them. And before we start, at the end, Anna will uh, 
reveal a contest and uh, the traders who will um, who will make it <laughs> okay it will be something really simple don't worry about that <laughs> you will receive a completely free book one of your books and uh, i'm sure it's going to be very excited for every single trader to read anna's book right so ladies and gentlemen let's uh let's start and anna you can unmute your microphone <laughs> that will be uh great so we can start yep can you hear me okay everything audio yes good? yes yes brilliant so uh so anna i would like to ask you a few questions sure. first just to know you better okay uh where are you from and uh, where do you live now may i ask you <laughs> yeah sure sure um i'm a, i am actually italian uh, my parents oh. my yeah, sono italiana oh <laughs> <laughs> nice e ancora parlo l'italiano <laughs> Um, also I, my parents came to the UK um when I was a, a small child and um sadly then they're, they're no longer um with me um and we were just part of um you know a wave of emigrants who came over in mm -hmm. in the 50s and, and 60s and uh, made our made our home here but uh, you know I'm based here my husband is um is actually half Swiss Okay. And, uh, wow. My mother and I have one daughter, and as my mother, late mother, always used to say, she's a bit of a minestrone. She's <laughs> Italian, English, Swiss, French. <laughs> so that's when. Um, uh, so you know, they, 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 yes, we've made, we've made our home here. We, st I still yeah. have a connection with Italy. I, I love Italy. I love going there. I know lots of people like the country as well. But this, this is my home, and we're based down here in a beautiful part of the UK, which is in Hampshire, mm -hmm. um, on the South Downs. So if you have a awesome, chance, so which awesome. Is so uh, how how did you start your career? Sure. Um, I'm sure. sure that people they are interested to know because we all come. Uh, basically yep. from different backgrounds yes, right absolutely. i mean i studied physics i have a master yes. in physics in mathematics yes. uh traders other traders they have um engineer background other traders they yes. work in retail yes. shops or they are um, yes. in the accounting so what's your background if may okay I ask well you? i would like to say that this is a very very democratic business if you like it doesn't matter what your yes. background is it doesn't even matter what your educational background is absolutely yeah the skills that you need to become a trader although you can certainly it helps if you you know have i don't know how many things if you've done a little bit of finance if you know a little bit about economics or mm -hmm. whatever your background is yes when you come to this business it's almost it, it, it's irrelevant because it's really nothing to do with education it's mm -hmm. it's a mind thing it's understanding um uh psychology actually yes psychology yes. understanding the emotions that are driving the prices that you see on your charts yes How I came to it is by chance um mm -hmm. when when we started with my husband Mm -hmm. it, it was almost impossible to access it from a retail perspective. Um, but at the time, we mm -hmm. lived in London, and mm -hmm. we also had a business that involved us working with very, very large banks and financial institutions in the city of London. And it was also the time when the whole if you like the beginning of retail access to, mm -hmm. to the financial markets for the ordinary person for the yes. trader mm -hmm. and what happened was i was doing something and i came across an article in the times newspaper um, mm -hmm. about um a person who what it was an article about someone who said you know do you want to learn to trade what is this trading you know do you want to uh take control of your financial future because most of us at that time we earned a living we paid our pensions we paid our taxes yeah. but we really didn't understand how what finance meant what trading 
yes. investing meant, even though, as I said, my husband and I used to spend uh, our working life, we were in trading rooms. We were we worked for worked in some of the biggest financial companies in the city, mm-hmm. but we didn't know what they did. We just yes. went into, we went in into these buildings, and we were in, in a we had a design company at that mm-hmm. time. Wow! <laughs> and I said to I said to my husband, I said, "Well, why don't you go? Why don't you go and see what what is this all this about?" And I suppose we were also coming to a point in our lives that we wanted to know a little bit more about. We were making money from our businesses, and we thought, "Well, you know, do I just give it to the bank? Do I give it to a financial advisor? Maybe I should understand a little bit more myself." Um, yes. He went along. It was um, it was held on a boat mm-hmm. on the Thames, of uh, an old boat called the the President, and that it was full of people. It was, there were people standing up. It was a presentation, and this person you can read about it in the book in uh, the complete guide to volume price analysis. A little bit more of a background behind it, and essentially, it was: Do you want to learn to trade? And mm-hmm. what it involved was actually trading FTSE futures, which was insane for someone who didn't know anything to trade <laughs> FTSE futures. If you could think of something more risky <laughs> to go into at that stage, you know, you would think you, you've lost your mind. You have to. And <laughs> we, my husband came back and said, do you know, I've gone to this and it looks sounds really interesting. But there were people there who were going to quit their jobs. They were going to sign up to this course. And by the way, this course was thousands of pounds. It wasn't cheap, but, you know, we had the money, we had the opportunity, (laughs) and that's how we got into it. But the one one thing I would say, regardless of whether the the whole scheme was a little bit suspect in terms of (laughs) ethics, if you like, Mm-hmm. Um, the one thing that we we took away from this um, uh, from this program, my husband did it first, and then yes. I did it afterwards. I said, "Well, if you're going to do it, I might as well learn how to do it because we always we were working together anyway." Is uh, the the program the course was uh, price action and volume? So volume wow. like was right at the beginning. Yes, of when that's we started awesome. this, this this journey, and in a way, I'm. I am well in right. I am. We are inter- eternally grateful for that. What we didn't appreciate at the time was that um, what was being taught was not mm-hmm. actually anything new. It was based on the work of Richard Wyckoff back in the thirties. Really? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Wow. <laughs> volume. My methodology of volume price analysis. Mm-hmm. I have come up with the expression volume mm-hmm. price. And prior to 2013, which is mm-hmm. when the book was published, no one spoke about volume price analysis. It didn't exist. Volume yes. analysis, price action with volume. We came up with this, well, what should we call it? Let's call it volume price analysis. But mm-hmm. it's not a new methodology. Um, it's very, it, I, it, you know, it's based very strongly on the work that was done by uh, Richard Wyckoff, mm-hmm. Richard Ney, um, there's Dow theory, mm-hmm. and you know, but at the time we had no idea. So, but we took it on board, price yes. action volume. And also the other thing which people may be interested from a historical perspective is yes. it was candlesticks, because it can't when we started. Um, the institutions, they didn't use candlesticks. I know you've got Steve Neeson coming on board, coming yes. to the talk. He will be able to tell you exactly when candlesticks were adopted um, by the institutions, the, the, pro, the prop traders and pro traders. Yes. The Japanese banks use them. They've always used them. Obviously, it's, it's a Japanese methodology, mm-hmm. you know, a, a method. But at the time... Um, as I said, it was price action volume, but more specifically candlesticks. And, you know, I'm talking uh, before the millennium. I'm talking 1997, 1998. Wow. So wow. It is, it's a long time. Oh, yes. And wow. so so that's how we got into it. Um, we started. We started with the FTSE futures at, wow. at £10, so- £10 a point. I mean, £10 
for one point, it's insane. It it's is insane. But wow. That's how we started. So that's that's impressive. And thank you so much for sharing. Now, may I ask you, uh, like, again, like many traders, you know, they want to feel, especially beginners traders and struggling traders, they want to feel um, what they can do or if their journey is uh, it's a normal journey for a trader. Okay, so I would like to ask you, did you feel at some point that trading maybe was hard until you acquired the right mindset, let's say, uh, or the right skills to approach trading? I, I, I don't think trading, I think trading becomes easier as you become more experienced and yes. you actually begin to enjoy it more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But I yep. think uh, I think to say that it becomes so easy because when you, as soon as you start to think that this is easy, that's it. The market will jump up and it will slap you in the face. You know, you 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 can have a good result, you can have a really nice trade, and you can you know you can make a a, a good amount of money, and you become mm -hmm. overconfident. And you know, the next time, uh, you know, you 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 will make a mistake. It's 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 a very it, I know a lot of people talk about mindset and it's and it is all in the in it's, it's it's your mind and it is but it's more than that it's really managing to to um to be successful you have to learn to manage the emotions that tr that trading triggers yes i um, love what you said i love what you said that's because what you have to do unfortunately i notice an um not only on during the live trading sessions I do um, here with uh, with admirals, but also before when I used to coach and all this stuff and traders, they were asking me, so, so uh, I'm reading books, I'm reading books about mindset, about psychology. And at some mm -hmm. point mm -hmm. they are deviating a lot from the point of actually we have to trade because yes. traders, it's yeah. like uh, they have that, that that belief that they have to win all the time yes like yes. we are programmed in life and we yes. say that in trading it's a yes. probabilities obviously yes okay so thank yes. you so much for sharing yes. that and um the it, it is also um what it does is the as i said you have to manage the emotion and the biggest emotion you there are a number of emotions you have to manage but one of them is a fear of a loss yes. nobody likes to lose no one and you're also yes. coming into an, a business uh that if you think about it logically all you're being asked to make a decision on is it going up or is it going down it's a binary it's it's a binary question yeah. and think well i'm intelligent and if i you know i've i've been very successful in my life i i've built a business i've i've got a phd i you know i i'm a successful oh, yeah. person why can i not yes make a correct decision and yes in, in and you've got to you have got to be able to face that and in a way mm -hmm. step back don't see it don't take it personally it's nothing to do with you exactly and, you know and the emotions that are triggered we all want to be successful we all want to make money but it's this it's this balance of not being carried away so if you make a mistake don't get angry be sad exactly. be sad of course no one likes to make a mistake but learn from that mistake and when you have when you're successful um enjoy the success hey you know you're only human mm -hmm. Enjoy it. But as I said, don't get carried away. And then you have to look to your personality. Mm -hmm. I know my personality. I've done an, you know, as part of our program, we have a, a Forex program. Mm -hmm. We in, encourage all our traders to take a personality test along the five. There are five basic personality traits, if you like. And at least you know where you are. And there's no right or wrong answer. It's just yeah. finding, you know, how do you react, for example, to a stressful situation? You know, one of the things they test for mm -hmm. is um, uh, neuroticism. Now, it doesn't mean you're neurotic. Yeah. It simply means 
where are you on that scale? I have a, I have a, um, I'm very low in neuroticism, which is great because I don't get terribly worked up. But on the other hand, sometimes I can be so laid back that I, I might be, I might take more risk than I should. I should be yes. worried. Do you know what I mean? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And it's something I believe that many yes. traders, uh, yes. we experience that at some point in our trading. Absolutely, absolutely. it's normal. Absolutely. We are human. So. Absolutely. By saying that, may I ask you, please, what is your trading style? Are you more uh, working on a daily chart or on the intraday? And if yes, what time frames uh, are you usually look? Uh, sure. I'm very much what I call, I describe myself as a short-term trader. Mm -hmm. So I will use the five-minute chart, the, the hourly chart, and I will also have the uh, the daily chart, mm -hmm. and I'll explain when I show show the chart. There's a particular yes. reason why I look at those time frames. And in the forex market, um, the the trades that it will deliver, it can either deliver a trade within a particular session of the forex market. So it could just be maybe mm -hmm. in London, and then it will change completely. And by the time New York comes along, yes, or sometimes. Um, you know, I could leave it on for um, a few days, depending because the daily chart may be saying, OK, you might as well hold for a bit longer. But I would say myself as, as short term, it's not going to be, um, you know, months as it were. It's 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 but I can't define the short term because it really depends on what I see on the chart and uh, one of the things always to be aware of is, well, is there going to be an important item of news that mm -hmm. is going to impact that particular pair or one of the, you know, one of the currencies? And and then the decision is, well, do you know what? I'm I'm out. It's fine. There's there's always something else to trade. Yes, in, exactly. In, in so by mention that um, it's something else you said to trade. So. Are you more focused on the forex markets, or uh, and can you please explain us when you say it depends on the session? For example, during the London session, if you're going sure. to trade the London session, or if you're going to sure. trade the New York session, right? Uh, do you have any particular pairs or indices you right. trade? Okay, um, the, the, the I think one of the things that possibly new traders don't appreciate about the forex market you asked me right yes it is forex and mm -hmm. uh, with my mt4 account i have access to a whole raft of instruments there are mm -hmm. indices on their gold you you, you know yourself so yeah, yeah. i like i like to do the indices um as well because it saves me having a futures account and i've got access i have to say with mt the mt4 platform when we first started with it um it certainly wasn't as comprehensive as yes. it is now, you know, oh, it, yeah. it was Forex pairs. And I think that was about it. I don't yes. think even there was nothing, but it's, it's amazing. It, it's a, you know, I can't speak too highly about it and you don't have to pay for data because yes. if you want to trade the indices, you, you know, it's a futures, you have to pay for data. Yep. Um, but to so, get back to the Forex, I think yeah. new traders sometimes, and I wasn't aware of this, I must admit, when I first started with yeah. Forex, because Forex was the last market that um, that my husband and I became in, involved with. It is actually three very distinctive sessions. There's the, the, the Asia Pacific, there's, mm -hmm. Europe, there's uh, Europe, London, and then there is New York. And it is marketed as a 24-hour market, and it is a 24-hour market, and you can access it at any time from anywhere. But you have to be aware that for a start, the, the participation level in each of these markets is, is very different. The impact, it, it has local news, obviously, mm -hmm. Aussie dollar, it's going to have a big, a very big move in Asia Pac. If there's Aussie news, as there was the other day. Yes, like a few and days ago, right? That's right. With the inflation then, data. Absolutely. And then when yeah. you have these, what I call these crossover periods, where one market is closing and one market is opening, it is a perfect time for entrapment of traders because you will see that, you see it all. I mean, I 
I see it all the time. But London, for example, eight o'clock, mm-hmm. seven o'clock, you have Europe. You, sometimes you will get a really nice move in a pair mm-hmm. and you think, oh, that looks good. And, and you go in and then come towards eight o'clock and London starts and you will get volatility because lots of traders are coming in anyway. Yes. There's, you know, and if you're not aware of what is happening behind the scenes, you, we have to sometimes we forget that this market has a very practical purpose. It's there to enable trade between two countries. So mm-hmm. the institutions are having to buy and sell huge blocks of share of, 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 of currency. They've quoted to their uh, customers uh, an exchange rate, and then they have to go out into the market and buy and sell. But at the same time, they will take that opportunity to make a little bit for themselves, you know. Yes, yes. Which is why for this market, um, uh, levels are so important and particular levels around zero, around five, because institutional traders, they're very lazy. <laughs> they, you know, when they quote, yeah. they're not going to quote some strange decimal point. They're always going to go... 137 zero. something. No, yeah. no, no, no. And when you place your stop, try not to put it with a zero and a five. Okay. Traders, so, you're listening no now. No zeros and no so... five. No, no. You also have, so with regard to the currencies themselves and the pairs, yep. some currencies are going to be more traded at certain, during the different sessions. Um, like, with, for example, can you give traders an of understanding? Course. I mean, of... the, if you like, the, the the British pound obviously is going to be, um, you know, looked at very closely and going yep. to, there's going to be more participation when London comes on board. Mm-hmm. When you come to the New York session, um, you have North America, you'll find the Canadian, but then you've got Canadian news at the same time. Yes. Then you have the pairs, the currencies and the currency pairs, which reflect sentiment. So you have risk pairs, you have a risk currency. The Aussie and New Zealand has a um, the, uh, the commodity uh, currencies. Yep. Um, and then that comes into the pairs. When we first started, um, the euro yen, for example, used to correlate really, really well with the S&P 500. If the S&P 500 went up, so did the euro yen. Mm -hmm. It was almost, that's gone. That's gone. Okay. Um, Awesome. Yeah. So uh, just to make it easy for everybody, mm -hmm. um, during certain trading sessions sure. there are certain currencies and currency pairs that they give uh, their maximum potential yes. let's put it that way yes. yes and so traders they have to be aware yes. that let's say they want to trade in london session they can sure. pick uh, the pound they can pick some indices like maybe the FTSE or the dax sure. is that correct yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Abso- a- 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 awesome. a- absolutely. If the um uh, and then you know to, to get back to the FTSE, if, yeah. if that's an index that you want to uh, that you uh, that you want to look at, for example, mm-hmm. um, most of the companies in the FTSE uh, 100 earn their um, uh, income abroad. They, they they earn in dollars. So mm-hmm. the 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 performance of the dollar is going to impact the uh the bottom line for those companies so you may you should be looking maybe at at at, at the dollar mm-hmm. um for american companies um the the s p 500 i can't remember what the percentage is that they earn abroad but certainly when the dollar was very strong uh back end of last year and at the earnings for um it was ibm i think said mm-hmm that the, 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 the very, very strong dollar had actually impacted their profitability. So, wow. it, it's, so exchange rate, a strength of a particular currency is, you know, has also uh, a, a relationship with the country, its exports, 
you know, a strong currency. If you're an exporting um, uh, country, you it's going to it can damage you. A weak currency. Um, and if you are a big importer and you're having to import your energy, your food, mm-hmm. which is all priced in you know in dollars, that is going to impact your uh, the you know it's going to make things very inflationary in your country. Yep. And wow. as I said, um, the, the, the currencies. This is why the forex market is so fascinating. It's fascinating because you have. You know, on on one level, it's a very simplistic. Is something going up? Is something going down? It's it's the market of it's a very mean reverting market. You have this, you know, these oscillations up, down, up, down. So from a trading perspective, it's great because it doesn't have a bias. It's not like stocks. You know, you 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 can go equally short and equally long. Yeah. Okay, so sorry to interrupt you at this point, because in a few minutes, we're going to you're going to share the screen, obviously, with us and you can explain that. Uh, I have a few more questions to go through in the next few minutes and then please, you're going to share the screen. Uh, There are many traders. I'm 100 percent sure that they have this question for Anna. So. when did you experience a significant loss in the markets, if you remember, or when it was your biggest loss that you say? Oh. I, I thought, <laughs> hmm, hand on my heart, I can't say that I, I've ever had a huge loss simply because of it. With volume price analysis, I keep going back mm-hmm. to the methodology yes. and the, the, the as I said, going back to how we were taught originally, it was always to go for consistency, mm-hmm. not to try and go for these wild, you know, uh, the, you know, these big numbers and then big mm-hmm. losses and, and, you know, big wins, big gains. It's, it sounds very boring, but Okay. Boring is good, and that so, actually has kept everything under under control. And okay. The older I wow. get, the more boring I get. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, um, w- would you consider, um, let's say, uh, let's say, what's your what was your biggest win? Let's put it that way. That that in in certainly in the forex market it would have okay. been it would have been um, uh, on the British pound uh, after mm-hmm. after uh, Brexit and also um, after the the shambles that we had last year with the political problems when the pound was just sold off. When you get one of these situations where the market just it, it's just insane. And it's just sells. It just, it, it, you know, you think it's never going to reverse. Yep. Think, that's it. And at that point, you, you look at the charts and you look at the volume coming in and you look at the candle pattern and you think, do you know what? This is it. This is this is the point. And that's when you go in. And that's wow. When you have you, that's when you have the reversal. But sometimes you have, you know, you 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 can spot it a little bit sooner. Um, and, and I know people say you can't time the market, you know, you can't pick tops and bottoms. It's not about picking tops and bottoms. It's it's looking at the chart. Mm-hmm. And when sentiment is so extreme, it, this is like an elastic band. You pull it and, yeah. pull it and pull it and eventually it will snap back. And as I said, with the with Forex in particular, it does have this this strong mean reversion. To give you an example, if you were if you're a stock investor, mm-hmm. you don't buy stocks on the premise that you're going to short them. You know, you Correct. buy a stock because you want them to go up all the time. Yes, exactly. So, so the stock market has a bias to the upside. Gold has a bias. I'm not going to buy gold because I want to see gold lose $200. I buy gold because I want it to go up. Yes, exactly. But in the forex market, I don't really care what happens yeah. to the pound dollar, to the cable. If it goes up, I want to buy it. And if it goes down, I want to sell it. Yes, that's it. Indeed. So uh, I think the 
the time for you to share the screen. Sure, and, no problem. And really walk us through how do you trade? What are you looking at your trading? Sure. Uh, we do have another, let's say, another 20 minutes before the sure. Q&A. So. Sure. Sure. Okay. Let me just see if I can bring my screen up. Um, hmm. it won't allow me to, oh here we are thank you I've done that yeah okay okay is that okay Has yes that yes perfect <laughs> that's brilliant okay um when I said earlier that this market is about well, we call it levels and flow um, volume is is flow. If flow is the is flowing into the buying of one currency and you know uh, 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 and and selling another, as it were. Mm -hmm. and levels are, I think, possibly more important in this market than as in my experience in any other markets. As I explained, not only do you have the institutions around at the noughts and uh, the the zeros and the fives, you know, you have this practical example, uh, a market where, you know, you, you have a physical exchange for, yeah. for goods and what have you. And so what we what we've done, I'm just going to show this because it just is it's been something that has helped us to establish where the money flow is going into what which currency. And this is from our um, quantum trading mm -hmm. set of tools. And we've actually developed um, a strength indicator, a strength meter. I'm sure a lot of the uh, participants will have seen similar ones that are out there in the market. But what it does, as clearly, it tells us what is, what is being bought at, at the moment, mm -hmm. what is being sold, where do you have some really nice, strong divergence. And when you have nice, strong divergence, there is an opportunity to, to spot a re potential reversal trade. Now, with volume, what volume price analysis gives us is, if you like, the price cycle, because prices go in a particular cycle. And um, for those of you who may not know Richard uh, Wyckoff's uh, work, um, and what I what we've based volume price analysis on is his three laws. His three laws are supply and demand, cause and effect, and effort and result. Supply and demand is those areas on the chart where you'd be looking at distribution and, and accumulation. So you mm -hmm. have major reversal points. Cause and effect is where you have a congestion phase. Uh, the longer the a price stays in a congestion, then when you have a breakout, you are going to possibly get a very, very strong move. And the effort and result, if you like, it's the, it, with on a volume perspective, you have a price move, you have a, a price action move, you have a move in the candle, but is it being supported by um, enough volume? Is it genuine? And that really is what volume price analysis tells you is what are you seeing on the chart? And is it a valid move? Is, you know, is, is the effort and result as it should be? Or is it an anomaly? And with volume price analysis, it's price action volume. Because we use candles and candlesticks, and obviously Richard Wyckoff didn't, it was, it was bars, support and resistance and time. And this is why I've got on here the hourly chart and mm -hmm. the five minute chart, because what I want to see when we look at this price cycle, if you are trading on the shorter time frames, you could in effect be trading in a price cycle that is counter to maybe what is going on in a slower time frame. Exactly. That, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. But what you have to accept is that you possibly could be taking on more risk. And mm -hmm. if you are going to be strongly counter trend trading, um, you may not stay in that trade very long. And it really comes down to your a time and that's the fifth element of vpa not just the time frame that you are trading but where does it sit against another time frame which i call the benchmark and then finally actually let's look at the daily chart is the daily chart in a trend 
is it in a congestion phase? Because if it is in a tight congestion phase on the daily, you are going to find it very tricky to um, be able to even capture a micro trend on a fast chart. You're going to get a lot of choppy price action, a lot of whipsawing. If the daily chart is in a strong uptrend or downtrend, mm -hmm. what's going to happen on the faster charts is, well, the chances are you could join that trend maybe mm -hmm. on a pullback. The pullback, if it is just a pullback and not a reversal, will be <laughs> determined by the volume. The volume will tell you, hey, this is just a pullback. Don't worry. The, the primary, if you like, the primary trend is going to continue. And that's what we've also developed in VPA is understanding primary trends and secondary trends. So what this That's does- That's awesome. Sorry, Anna, to interrupt sure. you, just to make sure that, you know, because in uh, this webinar, and of course, when we're going to put it out in the format of podcast, then sure. also on YouTube, they're going to be beginner traders. They're going to be uh, sure. experienced about traders and all this stuff. So sure. to make sure that everyone understands- uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's just a, a small recap, basically. So you're saying that through your analysis and through from what traders can learn from uh, from your analysis and your methodology, they have a high chance to spot a retracement in, and a reversal because it's a battle between traders. Which one is the reversal and which one is retracement and how can I separate these two? Yes, because okay, great. What, what, what will confirm that when if you just have the price action, all you see is, I mean, the candlesticks themselves, the shape of the candlesticks, whether they have a wick, whether you are looking at an engulfing pattern, whether you're looking at a two bar reversal, those of themselves from a price action perspective, tell you that there is a probability that something is going to happen. So yes. a candlestick with a deep low hammer candle, for example, mm -hmm. that of itself tells you, that pin bar will tell you, you know, the chances are, the probability, it is going to reverse. A shooting star, it is going to reverse, simply by yes. the shape of the candlestick. If you have the volume underneath it, mm -hmm. and you, it, it it gives you a higher, it gives you a little bit more confidence. It's, yes. You okay. Know what? Perfect. I think this is this is not just price based, but actually mm -hmm. there's something be else behind it. There is participation. There's activity behind it. So that's mm -hmm. that's what it that's what it does. But as I said, you have to see it in the context of the pr the cycle that you are looking at on the chart that you are trading, and also against a slower time frame and as i said there was a, a fantastic example this morning on the euro aussie which is an unusual cross pair not many traders they you know they tend to stick to euro dollar yep. capital, primarily because of the spread the cost. spread yeah yeah Absolutely. definitely and perfectly understandable yep. but something like the cross pairs because when they do trend they move quite well oh, it, they're yeah. worth holding you can hold them for longer so you can. Oh yeah. I, I don't know if you have found found the same thing. Maybe. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Especially um, when the pound kiwi it's it's on the go. Yes. yes. It's, it's, it's really on the go, absolutely. and it's just you move. know absolutely. If you look at pound Aussie sometimes, and it will yeah. put on two hundred pips. Oh uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's in a day. Even their average true range, they are about any anywhere between 150 yeah. to 220 yeah. pips. Yeah. All um, right. So yeah, just a little tip when yeah. some um asked about, you know, we're talking about the volatility of pairs and mm -hmm. what's going to move in certain sessions. Um in at investing.com, mm -hmm. they have a very nice little tool which breaks down the um the 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 volatility of pairs and their average movement over not just days but also mm -hmm. within sessions so you can see what is the average range if you like for a particular pair yep different sessions so it's 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 worth it's worth checking out basically sure right. so uh show us about sure no, a uh, euro was he Okay, yes. let's I'm going to have to bring this out so right. now we are in the euro australian dollar 
uh, Euro Australian chart. dollar. Yep. Um, what I've done here, I've actually put mm -hmm. them side by side. I've put the um, uh, actually. Let me just go quickly. Go back here. Right. This what was happening uh, earlier on today was if we look at the timestamp at nine o'clock this morning, you will see yep. the Aussie was rising quite strongly. And the euro, the euro's had a really bad day today. It's had, it's been very, very heavily sold. Mm -hmm. And this was on the hour. And it was, the, this was on this morning when I looked at it. Now, the question is on the hourly chart is obviously with, uh, with London coming in, is this likely to continue on the, uh, obviously looking at an hourly chart. So you go down to the five minute chart mm -hmm. and hopefully it will come up. We can go back far enough. Let's have a look. Here we are. There we are. That's it here. There we are. That was 11. That was the carry. What you see with the with the blue line here, mm -hmm. what you are says, have a look. If you look at the peaks, this is where it was still going. It was still carrying on higher. These mm -hmm. are the retracements on the five minute. So and now we are focusing, sorry, on the on blue, the five minute, on the blue on the line. Blue. The blue is, okay. the, is, is the Australian dollar. And you can see that whilst on the hourly chart, it was still showing that it was strong. Mm -hmm. On the five minute, you are obviously getting all these retracements. And with the euro, which is the uh, gold line, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. It was still falling, but it was effort to, it was trying to rise all the time and then falling. And actually, then we were then what happens is you have to be aware of the time and when new york is is coming so yes. whilst the hourly chart you had this nice smooth price action mm -hmm. with a continuing rise in the aussie a continuing fall in the euro mm -hmm. by the time one o'clock we're coming up to new york forex session time the aussie was beginning to roll over even though the euro was continuing to fall. How yep. that is reflected in the two charts. So what I've done here, what I put on this chart is I've actually put um, our equivalent of volume at price. So you mm -hmm. have uh, the uh, what's called the, the what well, we call it the volume point of control. You can call it the the mm -hmm. point of control. And I've also added to it an indicator because I said it was all about support and resistance. Mm -hmm. uh, these hatch lines that we have here, this is an indicator that we call accumulation and, dis and distribution. But essentially, what happens is it's support and resistance based on price. When a price touches this line, this line here, yes, it's rejected, and it touches it again and is rejected. It becomes thicker, so it, it not only does it give you the support and resistance levels mm -hmm. that are important, it also gives you an indication of how strong they are. Because obviously, mm -hmm. the stronger they are, the chances are it's going to reverse again. And this is where we are at the moment with Euro um, Aussie. What I have over here is, a, is the same chart, obviously, with the volume, a much simpler chart where it's yes. just the price action. Because I have, I also use um, a pivots. I also use Camarilla pivots, which mm -hmm. are based on floor pivots. Um, you know, traders, institutional traders use them all the time. It's a cleaner chart, but by using them together, Looking at these levels, looking at, um, you know, where is the price likely to pause or maybe reverse? And what I what I have to say is whatever. Um, it's really important for traders to find what works for them in terms of support and resistance. Exactly. You can, you can yep. do this manually. I mean, there is nothing wrong with doing it manually. Do you want to use moving averages? Do you want to use Fibonacci? Do you want to use, mm -hmm. I can't think of any other support and resistance type indicator, but however you use it, you know, it has to suit you. This suits me. These mm -hmm. levels are, have a proven to be um, extremely reliable. The Camarilla mm -hmm. ones, they, the, the, the third pivot is extremely important. Price almost always stops there, pauses, goes into congestion, maybe goes on, maybe reverses. 
what we have down here confirms mm -hmm. whether the, the break is valid. That's all we're looking for. We're constantly looking for validation of what we see in yep. terms of price. So if we move back to the five minute chart, just to give you, I go back from this morning and here we are. Okay, let's have a look. Right. If you remember on the hourly chart, we saw that the um, the uh, the Aussie was continuing to be bought and the euro was continuing to be sold. Mm -hmm. But obviously you had these oscillations mm -hmm. on, on the five minute chart where it looked like there was going to be a reversal. And when you the other thing you now have to decide is, well, what kind of signal do you like to use for your reversal? Do you like to use a single candle, a double candle? You know, there mm -hmm. are reversal candles. But what's interesting with this morning, where we had three, um, there was three, that was on the third um, attempt, if you like. This is the first one here, which mm -hmm. was at 11.20, where you have a two bar reversals. You have a lot of two bar reversals on Forex. I don't know why, but mm. you just pick up a chart. You don't back test it. It's purely from an observational perspective. You will find a lot of two, ver two bar reversals. This was a two bar reversal, not a huge amount of volume underneath there. They're in fact the same. What you would like to see is much more than that. But looking at. Sorry, question yep. that. Uh, sure. Maybe many traders they are sure. uh, they have the same question. Do you do you look at each volume bar individually, or do you look them as trends? Uh, you look at them both individually and as a okay. cluster. And also, if you you also have to look at this was eleven fifteen in London. Mm -hmm. Eleven fifteen in London is a very uh, busy. Uh, session. Mm -hmm. We don't have a holiday period. We don't, you know, the market should be at 100% capacity mm -hmm. because with, with volume, you also, it is contextual. It is in context to the session being traded as it were. Mm -hmm. um, but it didn't, you know, it, it from a price perspective, it looked interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and you think, okay, now, this is what I was saying on the hourly chart. This was the picture you were getting was that the Aussie was still rising and the euro was still falling. But if you're on the five minute chart and you're just looking to trade uh, a, a micro um, uh, trend or just a, you're looking for an opportunity, what you're looking for is you know you're going against the 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 primary trend mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. in the in the hourly chart is. Is that going to be enough for you? And also because of the spread, maybe if this was a euro dollar, it might be enough. But as a as a price of as a candle signal, mm -hmm. that is a perfectly valid two bar reversal. It's also coming off a strong support, which is mm -hmm. the a volume point of control. You think, okay, then you look above. Well, where's it going? Because the other thing when you look at, at, a, at a potential move mm -hmm. is well, how much do you think it's going to travel? And this is where your support and resistance comes in. You think, well, you know, what's my opportunity here, as it were? Yep. And it, then it's down to the individual trader that, uh, you know, I have, we have people in that we know in this industry that, that, you know, that take very, very small amounts. Others, they're not comfortable with that. And this was obviously, it, 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 it did reverse, but it didn't go very far into congestion. Volume is not very much hits all this resistance down here and down it comes again. Then mm -hmm. it has another attempt. And this is what I mean by the classic candle. You have a yes. very nice hammer candle there, reasonable amount of volume underneath it. And you think, yeah, okay. But you look at the next candle and you look at the volume under that candle mm -hmm. and you look at the spread of that candle. It's actually an anomaly because one of the things with VPA is you what you call benchmark. So you think, well, if it's taken that much effort to move the price, you know, that much, and you look at a similar candle uh, that we have that we have here, and it didn't move as far, then 
that that's not right it's it's it should be there should be more volume under there or that candle should be smaller that's what that's okay so what that's a great takeaway for traders yes, yes. so yes. they can look we can look the size yes. of the individual yes. candle of the individual we can look the size volume. of yes. the volume yeah yes. and if yes. they confirm each other it means yes. there is a healthy move yes. most likely to be continue yes. yes or if it's not no then we can maybe running yes. out of steam is that right, correct and then, that's right so you have a nice okay. hammer you have the next candle which looks very encouraging because mm -hmm. it's a nice wide range but the volume doesn't look terribly you know it's it's average it's nothing to and then you have two candles where you have a wick to the top of the candle which mm -hmm. are weak candles then you have this candle here which is smaller than that candle not much more volume you're also going to be running into the same area of resistance that you had here if you see this here mm -hmm. uh, coming along here and down it goes now what happened on this candle yes this i'm sure many traders they that's are right. uh, now, we have a few more minutes right. sorry that's, before we go right. to the q a that's so right. now, let's that's very interesting because yes. at 1 30 we had gdp for the usa and you think well what has gdp on the usa got to do with the euro Aussie, and it's nothing to do with the euro, it's to do with the Aussie, because the Australian dollar, as I said, is a currency of risk. It's a sentiment currency. The Aussie yep. yen is a pair that you would look at if, 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 if stocks are doing very well, the Aussie yen is probably doing quite well. And it's also got the yen in it. That's, that's another issue. That's, that's for another time, as it were. So that's why you had this volatility come in uh, you have massive volume underneath it, but it doesn't go anywhere. You ended up with this sort of uh, uh, um, a candle here, this um, sort of doji candle. Yep. US GDP actually came in better than expected. So, and and also the indices are doing very well as well. So you would expect the Aussie to be rising. The Aussie is bought when risk sentiment is positive. Similarly, you look at bond yields. When bond yields are falling, then you know it's risk on environment trading mm -hmm. environment and you know it it, it really goes nowhere the the, the hour nothing is happening it's intercongestion but we know it's a congestion because we are at the volume point of control we are at the the the, the deepest uh level on the volume of, this is volume at price it's a volume of volume you have this bulge that you can see here which is like a distribution curve that mm -hmm. you have. and you, when price is at a volume point of control it is going to move sideways you do have this break so this mm -hmm. is the last this is the exhaustion point that we found that we saw on the hourly csi the the aussie was carrying on higher the euro was carrying uh, falling. Then mm -hmm. we have, and also notice the increase in volume. This is when New York joins. So you would expect the volume bars to be to 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 be bigger. It doesn't invalidate the analysis that you have done here. You just have to read them in the context of mm -hmm. the session that you are trading. We are back to a we are back to an engulfing candle. Mm -hmm put that candle over there you have a very nice hammer candle yes an engulfing candle it's a very strong signal certainly stronger than that signal the volume together it's okay but this mm -hmm. is really the point where it did you did get a, a decent move it actually went through those the strong resistance but what you have is you have, um, I think there you have a, um, um, it looks like a shooting star, not a lot of uh, volume uh, under, un, uh, underneath it. Um, you're basically sort of moving sideways. It's it's quite choppy. It's moved up from the volume point of control. And this is what often happens to pairs. Because there's been such a good move, a strong move in the London session, we, we go back here. It's um, looks a little bit messy, the trend lower, but it's it, it it did actually hold, especially when you compare it with what you what was on the hourly chart. Um, come the session, 
that things kind of fall apart a little bit. That isn't always the follow through. So when you put a trade on, you have mm -hmm. to you have to consider. In fact, if you come midway through the London session, um, it's it, it, you you could be taking on more risk. And although this market is oh, you can trade at any time in any way. In fact. I think you are more successful if you actually start half an hour before the session cross, you know, the session actually starts. So if you're going to do London, you should be in Europe and then carry through. And then when New York comes on board, you know, if, if you're going to trade the New York session, come about 11, a couple of hours before, see what's been going on, look at what's coming up ahead with the news, what is the sentiment, and then go with what happened yeah. in new york yeah. but there isn't yeah. there is sometimes there's a follow through but sometimes most of the times there isn't you have a complete change of um of sentiment and, awesome you know, awesome you know, awesome you know, different so you know, different, i think i've got the if i got the yeah. chart so here. at this time at this time sure. anna I yeah. would like to read some questions that our sure. traders uh no they ask and the first one, uh, we have a few minutes, all right, so we can uh, go through quickly. Can you name, uh, what is the name of the psychological test you are talking about? Maybe uh, if it's something you can um, pass on by or you can send it later and then we're going we're gonna to send it to... I can send you, it's, it's the one we use in our program. Uh, mm -hmm. that we suggest our um our traders take so it's on your website um no it's not on no. the website it's only okay. in in the program but it's actually a free one that i found um i would have to find i'd have to send you the the, the link theo and you can send it out to people absolutely but, but basically, absolutely basically you test for the five big personality traits which okay. are and it's called canoe or ocean, which is openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. And okay. it's, it's a sliding scale. There's no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. No right or wrong. And the traders who have taken it have said that it's made a big difference because what it tells you, it also helps you. Um, if, for example, you score very highly for neuroticism, which means you you feel you don't respond very well to a stressful situation it's nothing wrong awesome with that. awesome no, nothing um yeah. maybe you should you don't want to stay in trades too long because yep, yep. it's going to wind you up so you make sense to probably be better off as a, as a sniping trader you know on a very short time frames you're in out in out and you can manage the emotion better Okay, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. It's okay. And uh, last question, please. Last question. Uh, sorry, conclusion, not question, because it was like a, a statement from from the person. So apologies, it's not a question. So uh, before you tell to the audience what can they actually do for the contest and uh, win uh, your free book, all right, just to make a recap, you are trading solely with volume and you see the level support, resistance, accumulation, distribution, and um, either traders can use candlestick or they can use um, something else, bar charts yeah, uh, from support, resistance. And if the volume confirms, the volume confirms uh, this, uh, this move, then it's a high probability trade. Yes. Absolutely. So and can you choose, choose your choose yeah. your candle pattern? Choose your candle pattern. Yeah. Either a hammer, mm -hmm. a shooting star, uh, an engulfing pattern, mm -hmm. a two bar reversal. Um, look at this, you know, where you are on the support or the resistance. Um, look at the check the volume. Um, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just just try it. But but you have to decide how you are going to uh, measure your support and resistance lines you know yes if you want to Perfect. do it manually it's entirely up to you i think i noticed a question saying how do you see the price action with all with all those yes <laughs> yes well, so I, um, I, I have lots of charts i have <laughs> lots of charts <laughs> yeah so what is the what's the contest what do you uh 
want the traders to do uh, I, I, know, ju I, I just want them to note down mm -hmm. uh, what works for them and mm -hmm. you know just see how many successful trades they can take and and mm -hmm. if they don't if the trades don't play out what is the reason they didn't play out which is almost more important from a successful trade a successful trade doesn't really tell you very much a, a yeah. trade that doesn't work <laughs> tells you a lot <laughs> exactly exactly so i think at this point uh so we're going to have the results in a month and um the uh i'm sure we're going to contact the people and we're going to uh give the books uh, or they're going to comment on our YouTube channel, I think. So when we upload the video with the results and then uh, the books, they will be given away. So I think at this point, um, we have to wrap up. It was a privilege and honor to have oh, you here, you. Anna. It was thank really you. a brilliant, brilliant uh, session. Thank you. Uh, you bring you brought a lot of value to to myself, to our trading community. I'm sure to all the people they're gonna have um, the opportunity to watch this webinar when we upload it on the YouTube, especially as well for the people they're gonna listen it through the podcast. All right. So uh, I wish you uh, the best luck with the Thank trading. You. Thank, Thank you. you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. We admirals, we uh, we would like to um, say a big thank you to you. <laughs> You're more than listen. You are more than welcome, and thank you everyone for taking the time out to come and to listen to me. I'm I'm very very humbled. Thank you so much. And if you want any more information, uh, just go to my website annacooling.com. Uh, I also do have a forex page on on Facebook. There's thirty eight thousand traders on there. I do post on there about the forex market. If you want to learn more about it, you are more than welcome. And as I said, it's it's been a, i'm the one who i'm honored and as i said thank you so much you've taken time out of your day to come and to listen to me which is <laughs> thank, you. thank you so thank much you. anna we thank wish you all the best thanks ciao. everyone thanks ciao. everyone for being here and ciao, ciao. thank you You're bye welcome. bye ciao